Meghan Markle here. Today is May 2nd, 2024. It is 4.33 a.m. This is video number two. Video number two, I want to tackle this tweet, okay? And I, I want to read that article. So let's get started. Murdoch Empire hacked politician for commercial gain and hid evidence new reports suggest. Okay, I have that open already. I think I did. No, no, no. Oh, never mind. So let's open it now. All right. So that was written yesterday by Byline Time Reporter. All right. Okay. New evidence suggests that Murdoch's company targeted politicians of every rank, including an attorney general and chancellor. First May 2024. All right. So let's see here. Rupert Murdoch's company used criminal methods to hack MPs phones for political and commercial espionage and deleted nearly 31 million emails as civil and criminal suit threatened to expose their behavior. A new report suggests the claims which have featured and numerous court action against the publishers of the now defunct News of the World and The Sun have been pulled together for the first time in June's edition of Prospect Magazine. Journalist Nick Davies, who first broke the phone hacking allegation in 2009, sorted through thousands of pages of evidence according to Prospect. Okay, is this? Oh my God, it was that small? Jeez. All right, I was having a hard time seeing the text. Okay, uh, where was I? Uh, the claim. Okay. Rupert Murdoch's company used criminal methods to hack MPs phones for political and commercial espionage and deleted nearly 31 million emails as civil and criminal suit threatened to expose their behavior, a new report suggests. The claim, which have featured a numerous court action against the publishers of the now defunct News of the World and The Sun, have been pulled together for the first time in June's edition of Prospect Magazine. Journalist Nick Davies, who first broke the phone hacking allegation in 2009, sorted 2,000 of pages of evidence according to Prospect to pieces together a narrative of how the company employed numerous private investigators to hack private individuals and also MPs, including cabinet ministers. My goodness! Mm. Phone hacking has cost the Murdoch organization an estimate £1 billion to date, and the ongoing court cases have exposed the cache of new evidence, including documents, invoices, call logs, and emails, which weren't available when the story broke. And I hope this is good for Harry's case leading up to, I believe, January 2025, right? More than 1,600 cases have been settled by the company Prospect Noted, Davis Prospect said has founded evidence that the murder company was using criminal means to target politicians of every rank, including an attorney general, business secretary, and chancellor, and that some of the hacking appears to have been done for commercial or political aim rather than trying to get stories. <laughs> of course, and then they make money out of the stories as well. That wasn't their aim, and then at the same time, to destroy the country. There's one video. Uh, what did I call that video? Um, I don't think too many people like it. Um, uh, due, to, due to the thumbnails. What is it like when you're at war and um, you then lose any men or something? I forgot how I... <laughs> and I think I put a cemetery or something like that. And then you will not see their face really clearly because uh, 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 the opacity was very low. 
and I think I put him and two of the newspaper owners. Okay, this is a war that's going on. I don't know why people don't see that. Yeah. All right, further claim in the prospect article include 16 Liberal Democrat MPs, then in the Conservative Coalition government received more than 1,500 suspicious calls. There were also hundreds of suspect calls to MPs from other parties opposed to Murdoch business interests. Claimant argues this was political and commercial espionage. Yeah. Gordon Brown, while Chancellor and Prime Minister, was allegedly targeted 24 times from the wrapping hub, a central phone number located where Murdoch's newspaper were based. There were suspicious calls to Dominic Grizz, then Attorney General, at a time when the Director of the Public Prosecution was considering possible prosecution against journalists and when there was the threat of contempt proceedings against newspapers. Five members of the House of Commons, Digital Cultures Media, and Sport Committees perceived to be hostile to Murdoch's commercial interests received hundreds of inexplicable calls. The Murdoch company claimed that there may be innocent explanation but settled a number of claims, Prospect noted. Mm -mm -mm. John Wittengale, yeah, Wittengale, then DCMS committee chair, was contacted by the News Corp lobbyist Fred Michael by phone call or text no fewer than 431 times during a 22-month period while his committee investigated phone hacking. Oh my goodness. This is the pressure they're putting on people. This is what Charles was afraid of. But sometimes people need to stop and face the bull. If you keep on running, they're going to keep on chasing you. I guess there are some decent people out there. If they get to the bottom of this, all the BS that we keep on seeing here, uh, hopefully it will stop. And I hope some of the information that they're gathering here, Harry could use in his case. My goodness. John Wittendell, okay, I read this. One MP who was hacked and told High Court that the pattern of behavior was a cynical and outrageous attempt to subvert the legitimate process of parliamentary scrutiny. Yeah. After a threat of legal action by the actor Sienna Miller in Adam 2010, the Murdoch company began email deletion, which saw some 30.7 million sons in news of the world email wiped. My God. 30.7. What in the name? And millions, by the way. Wow. Emails wiped along with those from top executive. The claimant said that this was a deliberate attempt to destroy a incriminating materials. The company says there may be an innocent explanation. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. Journalists or investigators who might have blown the whistle were rewarded with jobs or cash payment and required to sign NDA's non-disclosure agreement. Uh, police seized 125 items after arresting News International CEO. When was that? What? Okay. This thing was a little bit soon. I read the date a few minutes ago. Where is it? May 1st. That was yesterday. She was... Oh, fuck. I missed the place. Okay. Five members of House Command. John Wilson there. DCM. Okay, so there's that. Okay, I read 30 million. Journalists or investigators. Okay. Fuck. I missed... Uh, police. Okay, so this is where I was somewhat here. Police seized 125 items after arresting News International CEO Rebecca Brooks. And, oh, that was back in 2011. I should have finished reading. <laughs> Instead, I went to look uh, at today's date. Okay, so this is old. I, I thought that was recent because she's in hot trouble. Okay, so let's see here. Um, in, 20, in July 2011, they were placed in a secure area under the supervision of two Murdoch's executives, Simon Greenberg and Will Lewis, now publisher and CEO of the Washington Post. Um, that, was it that someone was making reference to that person? In one of my tweets, one of my videos. Okay, it was several weeks before detectives completed a detailed search of all the equipment and which point they discovered that only 117 of the items were still there 
eight filing cabinets that they had seized from the office of the editor and the managing editor had been removed. They have not been recovered. I mean, <laughs> this thing is gone. Police found an underfloor safe in Brooks private dressing room, which was filled with hard drives and computers with thousands of emails from key executive editors and journalists. Oh my God. Of the 30.7 million missing emails, only 21.7 million were recovered. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's more than half. Okay, leaving more than a quarter of the archive, around 9 million emails lost forever. Okay, so I remember I was taking screenshot for you guys and I saw this one. Princess Daniel's phone pest story linked both Rupert Murdoch's and Peace Morgan to the criminal media nexus of police corruption. So I'm going to, if you guys read this, you probably should be able to read that as well. Okay, April 3rd, 2024. All right, Princess Diana phone pest story links both Rupert Murdoch and Pierce Morgan to the criminal media nexus of police corruption. Okay, an amended claim by Prince Harry and the High Court puts both the interviewer and newspaper mogul in the spotlight, Peter Juke, 3 April 2024. I'm surprised I didn't come across it until now. It's very weird because it was to the screenshot. I saw it. I was just skimming to what I was sharing with you, but I didn't fully read the whole thing. Okay, so let's see here. A newly pleaded document uh, submitted by Prince Harry's legal team last month as part of his ongoing case against Rupert Murdoch's newspapers for privacy intrusion shed more light on what former Prime Minister Gordon Brown called the criminal media nexus of journalists, private investigators, and corrupt cops during the heyday of the tabloid. An amended claim over alleged unlawful information gathering and the case of HRH Duke of Sussex versus News Group newspaper. Okay, he is still HRH. Okay, this is not due to uh, the paper is using it because it has that's part of his name and it's not for uh, commercial purposes. All right, this is a legal process, so they're putting his name for the derangers who are always saying he's not HRH. Okay, but let's continue. All right. An amended claim over alleged unlawful information gathering in the case of HRH Duke of Sussex versus news group newspapers, the claimant have lodged a notorious news of the world front page date 21 August 1994, carrying an exclusive story alleging that Princess Diana was a phone pest. <laughs> What's a phone pest? Die cranky phone calls to married Oliver. Mm. Uh, why they all about it for God? The story can only have come from police sources and so implicates both the then editor of the now defunct News of the World, Pierce Morgan, his then chief crime reporter, now editor of The Express, Gary John, and the proprietor, Rupert Murdoch himself, and the warring trade between the tabloid and corrupt police officers. At the center of it all, and at the center of many of the ongoing civil claimant against both Murdoch's newspapers, Mirror Group, and the male titles, is the role of the infamous detectives agency, Southern Investigation, and the murder of its co-founder, Daniel Morgan. Police and tabloid corruption. Okay, Daniel Morgan was alleged to have been investigating police corruption when he was asked to death in a South London pub car Park in March 1987. His business partner, Jonathan Reese, was the prime suspect. Reese was arrested a few weeks later along with... Is that the same story? Okay, let me continue reading, but I think this is different. Okay, later along with uh, one of the lead detective on the initial murder inquiry, Detective Sergeant Sid Fillory, at the inquiry into Morgan's death in 1988, evidence emerged that Reese and Fillory had colluded in covering up the murder. By this point, Fillory had retired from the Metropolitan Police and taking Morgan's place at the detective agency. Southern Investigation was now on its way to becoming a one-stop shop for the dark of okay of unlawful news gathering for the tabloid okay throughout the late 1980s and early and early 1990s sudden investigations became the main hub for selling confidential press oh my god what in the name jeez 
Southern Investigation became the main hub for selling confidential personal and financial information to the press obtaining by phone tapping, burglary, covert surveillance, and computer hacking. Its major purchaser was Alex Marwonchak, news editor of the News of the World. Ries and Fillory were also instrumental in training up a raft of Fleet Street journalists in subterfuge and surveillance, the most notable of which was Master Mahmoud, the Sunday tabloid's famous fake sheik, one of the main sources of both this illicit information and the techniques for gathering it was a network of covert police officers in southeast london oh my lord the trade was so extensive the cid in the area was known as the news of the world regional crime squad reese and fillory close relationship with organized crime and the firm within a firm of covert met police officers saw them engage in a roaring trade with News International, but even if the amount of money siphoned off to Southern Investigation didn't attract the attention of the company's proprietor, Rupert Murdoch, the political dimension of their dark arts surely will have. Okay, what is that here? I think these are the... Okay, so there's more. This is a bit extra. I'll leave the link in the description, okay? Uh, it's good to read, but, um, okay, so I'm only 16 minutes. All right, so let's finish. Okay. All right. When the then culture secretary, David Merlock, suggests in 1991 that the popular press is drinking in the last chance saloon, that reminds me of, uh, what's her name? The Bojo sister. I find it hard to see who is the winner here. I mean, Prince Harry goading the press is only, and in forcing the press into humiliating payouts is not going to be particularly good for, for the Sussexes. And it's certainly not great for the press, which is on the hook. I think I think the total payouts for phone hacking and other illegal uh, inf information gathering is up to a billion. And there are many, many more cases to try. So my my point about all this is I think we only have losers here and it's in all our interests that we have a strong, vigorous and honest press. And if it was strong, vigorous and honest, I agree that the press would have reported more on the judgment, the Prince Harry judgment that came through on Friday than it did. It was basically a broadcast story, far more than it was a print story. And of course, the print and broadcast are in competition, so you can sort of understand that. Um, so my question is, who who wins out of this? Has the has Prince Harry done the press lasting damage? Do you think that as a result of the the judgment against that went against Mirror Group newspapers, we're going to see some sort of state regulation of the press? I genuinely hope not. I don't want the press to be in the last chance saloon. That the popular press is drinking in the last chance saloon. I don't want the press to be in the last chance saloon at all. I want I want to see newspapers thrive. This is my industry and I think it's in all our interests that we have a thrive and we've got the most wonderful uh, newspapers in the world in this country. You you read the newspapers in in the states or in France, they're very dull. They're not entertaining at all. I think that we can have a both a serious and an entertaining press. And that's what I want to see survive. I don't want to see Prince Harry destroy the industry I love. Okay, sudden investigation set up the surveillance and bugging devices to expose him in an extramarital affair. Reese and Fillers were also Reese and Fillery were also instrumental in the brokering of letters stolen from oh. Paddy Ashdown solicitor. <laughs> I click on it by accident. I didn't know you could listen to it. So we might as well listen to it instead of me reading it. All right. So let's continue then. Showing that the Liberal Democrat leader had also once had an extramarital affair. The information was revealed just before the 1992 general election. In effect, Southern Investigations and Alex Marinchak were becoming masters of politically targeted compromise years before the Russian term was well known. But where do Piers Morgan and Express editor Gary Jones fit in? And what did Rupert Murdoch know? The phone pest story. 
The following is an edited extract from Who Killed Daniel Morgan, which I co-authored with Daniel Morgan's brother, Alistair Morgan. Piers Morgan took over the editorship of the News of the World at the age of 28 in February 1994 at the height of a tabloid frenzy around the breakup of the marriage of Princess Diana and Prince Charles. Morgan's only journalistic experience to date was penning the bizarre celebrity column at the Sun. He appointed an even younger Rebecca Brooks to become features editor that spring. Given his inexperience with reporting, Morgan relied heavily on the older guard at the newspaper, especially his then news editor, Alex Marincek, whom he described as having a deadpan, half Ukrainian, mastitude visage. <sighs> Marincek's police sources would soon land Morgan in trouble. In his autobiography, The Insider, Morgan explains how, in August 1994, Marincek and chief crime reporter Gary Jones walked into the editor's office in Wapping and explained, got rather a big one here, was. Diner's a phone pest. Marinchak went on to elaborate, the cops are investigating hundreds of calls she has made to a married art dealer called Oliver Hall. But it could be something innocent. My goodness. Wow. These people are, mm. but let's listen. I, this is the part that really made me wanted to read this, but I didn't even know there was an audio here. So let's continue. That's very interesting. Jones backed up his news editor with a readout from the police report, which he then quoted verbatim. Hall had received hundreds of silent, anonymous phone calls and reported them to the police. With the help of British Telecom, the police had traced the calls to Kensington Palace the home of Princess Diney. When Hall was informed of the source of the cause, he told police officers that he and his wife were friends of Charles and Diner, and he had been, according to the police report, consoling her and becoming quite close to her after her separation from the then heir to the throne. The news of the world called the antique dealer for comment. Hall did not but, deny... But what is it that problem, though? How is this the issue? You phone hack them. They're having a conversation. We don't know what the conversation is all about, but you want to know what in the name? Am I listening to this properly? But okay. There had been a police investigation. Under the bylines of Gary Jones and Royal reporter Clive Goodman, the news of the world splashed the story over the front and foreign side pages. My God. The details in the exclusive could only have come from the police documents. The date of Hall's first complaint, the involvement of BT's Specialist Nuisance Calls Bureau. The special code BT was given to trace the calls. The activation of the code on the 13th of January 1994, transcripts of six silent calls, and then the tracing equipment, which linked the calls to a private number used by Prince Charles. Mm. All of this detailed information could only have been sourced from the police. Mm -hmm. The next day, in a long... And you know what I like? They put, uh, what is it? Screenshot of the article. My goodness. She called three times in nine minutes and hung up as she heard Oliver's voice. What in the name? Police follow phone trail to her bedroom. Oh my God. What in the name? But let me continue listening. Interview in the Daily Mail, Princess Diner denied the story. Piers Morgan began to worry that he had made a huge career blunder. There were calls for him to resign. Marinchik tried to reassure the news of the world editor by telling him, we've heard the report read to us, she's lying. But Morgan still feared that the document could be a forgery. Hmm. I felt sick to the pit of my stomach, Morgan recalled in The Insider. I couldn't eat or even drink a cup of tea. It was hellish. What Murdoch knew. Okay. The only thing that finally put Morgan's mind at rest was a call from his proprietor, Rupert Murdoch. Hi, Piers, Murdoch said. 
I can't really talk for long, but I just wanted you to know that your story is 100% bang on. Can't tell you how I know, but I just know. He then instructed his editor to get on TV and tell the world wow. that Princess Diana is a liar wow. and to promise more material in the Sunday tabloid the following week. It's Don't probably a setup from within, you know, even as I'm editing this video, I'm listening to the audio and I still come to the same conclusion of what I was thinking when I was first recording it. Someone within is setting or was setting Princess Diana up because remember the marriage is over. They're no longer together and uh, they want to paint a picture of her. So they're setting her up to say she was sleeping around, which is some of the things we have been hearing. Okay. Oh, she sleep here. She sleep that. They even questioned uh, Harry, uh, whose father and stuff like that. So they were setting her up. That's what I think it is. Oh my Lord. These people are vile. But let's get back to the original recording. Let's let's just listen. I could see who probably was behind this to set her up, but let's continue. Relieved, Morgan couldn't help admitting to Murdoch that he didn't have any more material. Murdoch replied, "Oh, you will have by Sunday. Don't worry. Got to go. Good luck." How had Murdoch independently verified the story? It was Alex Marancheck who had seen the police report. Would the proprietor have checked? with his veteran news editor. At the Levson inquiry into the practices, culture and ethics of the press in 2012, following the exposure of phone hacking scandal the year before, Murdoch explicitly denied even remembering meeting Marancek. But in careful legal language, guarding against any surviving photos, he added, I might have shaken hands walking through the office. By the point, Marancic had served in a number of senior roles at the News of the World from his first days in the whopping dispute, attending parties hmm. with the News International CEO and senior police officers, to being made editor of the Irish edition two decades later. Okay, these are the parties that Charles will be going at and then bring William to mingle with these people. Okay, this is the, this is the thing here. Oh my goodness, but let's continue. Steve Grayson, a freelance photographer who worked at the Sunday tabloid in the late 1990s, recalls Moranchik explicitly saying that he had a direct call for Murdoch on one occasion. Despite his growing global influence, there is also no doubt that during this era, Murdoch himself still called senior management at the newspaper most Friday or Saturday nights to check what stories were coming up. And there's more evidence that Murdoch was well aware of the existence of Marincheck, who had served his company for more than 25 years. In correspondence from September 1997, the then Taoiseach of Ireland, Bertie Arler, wrote personally <laughs> to Murdoch to, to thank him for the news. I'm laughing at myself as the guy, wh whoever, um, the narrator who's reading this pronounces i'm like how the hell was i gonna pronounce this if i was reading it but let's continue the world's coverage of the country's general election he said he particularly appreciated the very professional approach of your associate editor alex marmancheck and even asked murdoch to pass on my thanks and best wishes to alex murdoch replied on the 30th of September 1997. I shall be delighted to pass on your comments. Whatever Murdoch's uncertain memories of Alex Marincheck, the ultimate source of Piers Morgan's scoop was a confidential police file. Wow. Later, Morgan was careful to say that the source wasn't a serving police officer, partly because that would have opened him and any police officer up to criminal charges. Nobody was censured or sanctioned for the phone pest story. In fact, it was quite the opposite. Gary Jones went on to win the Press Gazette's Reporter of the Year award, partly due to his news of the world exclusive about Diner's anonymous cause. Criticized by the then Press Complaints Council, 
for another intrusive oil splash. Morgan would leave the Murdoch Sunday tabloid in 1995 wow. and take up an even more senior position editing its rival, the Daily Mirror. He would soon bring over Jones and, with him, the dark arts of Sid Fillory and Jonathan Rees. Wow. Ongoing trials. Okay. While the judge has not ruled whether Prince Harry's claims can date back to 1990 and the targeting of his mother, the evidence of Gary Jones' relationship with Southern Investigations has already been heard in the case of the Duke of Sussex and other claimants against Mirror Group newspapers. The judge in that case, Justice Fancourt, concluded Kenneth Morgan, as editor of the Mirror newspapers, must have known about phone hacking mm -hmm. and other unlawful information gathering. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, similar evidence is due to be heard in the pending claims by Prince Harry and others, including Baroness Doreen Lawrence, in claims against the publishers of the Mail and Mail on Sunday. According to the particulars of claim issued so far, Associated Newspapers also procured the services of private investigators involved in illicit information, including allegations that Southern investigations were involved in targeting the family of Stephen wow. Lawrence, murdered by a racist gang connected to the Southeast London underworld in 1993. Like the tabloids used to say, this story will run and run. This is crazy. I'll leave the link in the description. Oh my Lord, let's see here some of the comments okay they hack everyone anyone to get juicy stories why they were able to get away for so long why pay out millions of settlement even work shy really settle and secret why charles and william did not want heavy to sue the tabloid they are all uh, complicit i think so too not william because william was young but the phone calls tracing back to princess diana and all of that this could be an insider job Okay, it may not be Princess Diana. It could be someone who was trying to make this seems like. If you look at right now what's happening with Kate, the headline that they sang about Kate, all right? So she already messed up her past, so they could always use her past to, you know, to pop up them in the future. But Princess Diana, they were setting her up. Oh, my Lord. Self-explanatory that they are here. And this is why he was taking William to parties. I will never forget the time that I stumbled upon that article. I was looking for something. I don't even remember what I was looking for. But, and I click on that particular article thinking it will help me with whatever it is that I was uh, searching for. As I started reading, reading, I was starting to get bored. And I was like, damn, so many names. And then when I put one and one together, I was like, oh my God. Charles is training William to be in that mess. And he did a pretty good, I hate to say that, he did a pretty good job because right now, we're not talking about Charles that much. <laughs> he threw out the cancer so people could feel sorry for him, but all we're hearing is the mess that William is in, okay? And you don't hear anything about him. Oh my God, they are full of baggage. Okay, so there's that here. Uh, what's the, that's an ad, okay? Makes you wonder what the police is doing about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, and this is why, look at this, um, when they do an investigation on, um, what's the other one? Uh, Prince Andrew, thanks drop. They do an investigation on Charles uh, about the bag of money, thanks drop. All right, so it's a, it's a cycle, it's a hub of a group, all right? And uh, you already know who's the head of it. All right, so this one, I might have this twice. Because it was coming under my timeline, different time I happen on Twitter. So if the next tweet is that, maybe I'll play. I don't know. It probably be different caption. Okay. These old British men and women need major psych evaluation because this is not normal. American Megan is not an effing slave and not a subject of that isle, monarchy or its people. She doesn't owe or have to do shit for them. And what the F are they so obsessed with? royal waving okay 27 seconds 
Megan with her super stardust, which is why people like you are so peeved because no, she turned I'm, her I'm back on Britain. I understand peeved. we can we can I'm sort out some cancelling for you, Kelvin. I'm peeved you know, about her You will actions. recover from this. You why will recover from this. Why doesn't she come back? Why doesn't she come back to the UK and wave to us all? Because she thinks people like Kelvin they can. Oh my God! I can't believe. I, this is why I love to leave these things when I'm recording so you guys could get my stupid reaction. I can't believe this grown man just said that. <laughs> I swear to God. I can't believe that grown ass man who's probably could be grandfather over could be my grandfather at his age. Why can't Megan come and wave to us? <laughs> I can't believe it. I didn't even finish this into it. Let me move it back again. Did I hear it correctly? Why didn't she come back? Why didn't she come back to the UK and wave to us all? Because she thinks people like Kevin McKenzie are going to be all. Well, I'm entitled to a view. And so are you. You're entitled to a view, but that shouldn't stop her coming out and giving her views to our country. Megan, with us, I, I can't believe this. I can't believe it. I can't believe this. Why can't Megan come back and wave to us? <laughs> let me read some. Let me see how the squad sees that. Okay, let's start from bottom again. I think this is. <laughs> this GIF has me. <laughs> I knew it was. I'm just giving to it. The squad of just. <laughs> She's hiding her face here. Why did I just hear that? I swear. I swear. Oh my God. I got a headache. Oh my God. What did I just hear? It does give us a free insight in the twisted thought of the Rangers. Mine is on mute and I don't read lips. I already know what travel they are vomiting at museum. Oh my God, I'm sorry, I'm laughing. Okay, I, it seems like I'm going to read all because this is hilarious. After the way you guys treated her and her children, she should never step foot in your blambering country ever again. All right. That's an ad. I can understand the word they're saying. Okay, there's that here. Um, he finally said it out loud. He's so mad and trash her because she won't come back here. Okay, if only... Oh my God, I'm still laughing about that. If only they put the same amount of effort into finding out what happened to Kate Middleton and why no one other than one supposed person with an iPhone and William has claimed to have seen her in person, Megan is just a distraction. I don't know why people can see this. Yeah, I mean... But that one was kind of funny. <laughs> Why can't Megan come and wave? Okay, I, can you imagine if Megan come and then start spilling some tea? Okay, what happened to Kate and say all of this? <laughs> okay, we haven't seen her. She has cancer. We've seen her. Oh my God. It just reminds me of one of the streets that I read. One of the um, Spanish squadies said, if... Uh, if Harry had married a Latina, how much, you know, tea that Latina would be spilling? That's what I think. <laughs> but Megan is not like that. Uh, let me read and finish with that. First of all, they are, they are going on an invitation to talk about IG, not to explore her roots. After the way they treated her and still trying to burnish her character, they told her to go back where she came from and she did and she wasn't welcomed by the media and trolls. The Ranger is the correct nomenclature for them. They are obsessed with Megan and challenged by her strength, resilience and nature shine. My goodness, they want her but you reap what you saw, a treasure lost through mismanagement. Okay, this is not normal behavior. <laughs> I like that emoji. Okay, OMG, I can't believe his comment. I know. I let out a laugh. That was me here. This kind of laugh. This is not normal behavior. <laughs> There's that here. Oh, mate, want Megan to come back and wave at him. Officially lost the plot. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I just listened to that. He wants to come and what? Wave at who? <laughs> Okay, let me stop laughing. He wants to come and what? 
wave at who? Is she some zoo primate who must be flown to wave at Kevin? That's the vomit here. Yeah? Old dude say he owes views. Oh my God. Yes, please interrupt and talk over the woman. Typical. Megan should never go back, unfortunately. Uh, I can't believe they're actually having a heated discussion over this. Megan left the UK four years ago, but they still act so possessive of her. The way they're framing this and Victor's trip to Nigeria shows how shady and dishonest they are. Yeah. Okay, why does why doesn't her pa and law cover the Sussexes with security? Call off the UK media, retract every lie told about them. Until then, miss her without your bow. Okay, uh, her not coming should answer his question. But if he really wants to know, he needs to ask that family and look in the mirror at himself. They started all this mess. Yep, one hundred percent. It's all them. Uh, these repulsive fetishes should concentrate on their partner instead of drooling over Megan. These old white men are disgusting. They, I can't believe the laugh that I let. They have an obsession with Megan that is not normal at all. They should get treated. Yeah, they should. They should get treatment smelly as they are all right he's so peeved but they drove them out well he should talk to peace morgan because peace morgan told her to go back to america peace if, you don't, if you want to be private go back to america and live privately it's pretty straightforward they drove them out and hope they'll fail and then come back and be on hardly do they know them and underestimated the strength of love courage and compassion yeah they are hoping mad as uh, they hold them to account and they dictate their narrative on their terms a grown woman made a personal decision that works for her and that has led to multi-day tantrums what gets me is that none of these bitter men have ever been this upset at andrew for raping a 17 year old <laughs> All right, this is a preview of what to expect should UK win the IG bid. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Let's listen to it one more time. I can't believe this guy is <laughs> dead serious. <laughs> Megan with her super stardust, which is why people like you are so peeved because I, she turned I'm, her back I'm on not Britain. I'm I understand peeved. we can we can I'm sort out some plans for you, Calvin. You know, about her you actions. will recover from this. You why will recover from this. Why doesn't she come back? Why doesn't she come back to the UK and wave to us all? But because she thinks people <laughs> like Kevin McKenzie are going to be all. Well, I'm entitled well, well, to a view. But that's true, and though, so isn't are it? you. You're Don't entitled to a view, but that shouldn't stop her coming out and giving her views to our country. Megan with her super. I was holding the laugh. <laughs> Let me move on. The last tweet. I was holding the laugh as I was watching it again. <laughs> it's like, now I could see why the others have their teddy bears and all of that. These grown men are freaking ridiculous. Yeah, that was the same thing. <laughs> oh my God. All right. So there's that here. The same video. The squad will be tweeting it. <laughs> Okay, the arrogance of this man is off the chart. She is not your slave. Go lose those plantation owner vibes and saying that <laughs> that I loved his mis okay. Uh and saying that I love his misery. That's the laugh here. Embarrassing scary OMG. Did that man just say that the British public is entitled to Meghan Marco and that she must come back to Britain to give them a wave and a view? What the hell? <laughs> I wasn't sure if it was the same thing, but it is. <clears throat> oh, I put it twice, but let's read the caption. We just hear it. I don't want to start laughing again. Oh, thank God. It's not that long. The truth offends. The capacity is bloody wicked mad. Oh my Lord. Okay. So this is another retweet. Is that the same one that I retweeted? <laughs> the squad are laughing too. <laughs> You know what? Let me get off this thing because it's this this is ridiculous. I don't wanna give myself work. <laughs> they think they owe us whatever um okay, whether it's person of color or woman, my lord, I cannot feel even more sad for Diana. She had no one. Yep. Thank goodness Megan has Harry because I would have lost my mind. Okay, these people are mentally ill. Yeah, like I've always said, they all need to be checked including the psychologists over there they need to be checked too because they can with that kind of environment they cannot be well enough to treat people no it must be okay it must be all that shit that pumped up into the water uh literally they have been okay he's literally crying for megan to come back <laughs> i know 
<laughs> Let's see here. Racism is a hell of a drug. Why will the water the daily fell want someone straight out of Kempton to wave at their niggling, at, <laughs> niggling ideas? Megan owes... Megan owes them nothing. They can handle a person of color ignoring them. It reminds them they are small. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm telling you. They want Megan to come back so that they can reject her to her face. Yeah, probably that. They want to have pics and videos of people booing and screaming at her. Yep, and upsetting her. They want to put her back in her place publicly. Then they want to say how many people hated her and she wasn't welcome. That is true. Because Megan left on a high note with her head held high and rejected them. So they want to be the one. I think I have said that a long time ago. They want to be the one to say, I don't want you. This kind of thing. But it's Megan who told them she doesn't want them. Okay, deep down, they want to be loved and wanted by Megan so badly. That's all I've gotten from the tantrum. Okay, it's about time honorable British reporters like this lady stand up to these bully British reporters in defense of Megan. It's so refreshing. Sometimes I get confused with her. Okay, it depends on whatever the, the, the wind is blowing or whatever it is. But sometimes I get confused with her. Other clown as fool. Okay. But come and wave to us, abuser. <laughs> okay, this is getting wacky and sicker. Whiteness entitlement. All right, let me re read this. Okay, she is not. That's what I thought too. Cause sometimes I I can't. I get confused. Is she the one that I saw who said something? All right, she is not to be commended. She pretended to be an advocate for the Duchess of Sussex and Tune. Give her a few more days, and she'll say some off the wall comment about her again. She wishy washy. Yeah. I did get confused with her. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm ignorant of her past writing. Thanks for being informed. Trust me, she is not honorable. She is just as evil. She pretend to defend Megan to line her pockets. She is a slave master too. Okay, kind of, but she was wrong in saying Duchess Megan turned her back in Britain. Big lie. The whole world witnessed her Britain tormented Megan out of Britain. And th let's not forget, Peace Morgan literally told her to go back to America. All right, so that's all I have. The next videos that, okay, maybe I'll record it now. I have four, okay, five tweets for PYTE. All right, so that's it. Please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share. <laughs> I'm laughing about it. Please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share. If you want to support this channel, there's a PayPal link and a Cash App link in the description. You could donate. Those who have donated, thank you. And don't forget to check my shop and see if you like some of the stuff. Okay, so that's it. Thank you for watching. Oh my God. I It's a great privilege to be with all of you today. You know, we want, we ask for forgiveness and, uh, and please come back.
this that I'd hoped for all my life. Thank you. 